Hi, welcome to Copenhagen. Thanks for dropping in. Hope everybody is doing well. Today I want to show how I start a square drill diamond painting with a diamond painting pen. So I received an email a few days ago from Wendy and she was telling me that she had uh, started work on a custom diamond painting square drills and she was having a lot of problems uh, getting them straight. So I've been emailing her back and forward and then I thought rather than just speaking to one person it might be an idea to actually do a video and uh, other people who are new or people who are looking to start their first square diamond painting, maybe they've been doing rounds, they've heard a lot of things about squares, they're kind of worried about trying it. I thought I would do a video of how I start and how I work with square drills. So I've set up, um, I've removed the original clear cover, I really don't like it, and I've put down release paper. Um, I do have videos about release paper, I'll add at least one link into the description in case you don't know what release paper is. And I've put these uh, table placemats on top. Now the reason I do that is because I work on a tilted table and if I didn't put these on top, if I put anything on top of these uh, release papers they would slide down the table. The other thing is it keeps the, the release papers flat uh, because you have these overlaps so it's easy to pick up. Um, if I was working on a flat table and I had things down and was moving them around it would catch this and start to bend it and stuff. So it gives me a big, nice big work area to put uh, the container from my drills, um, my laptop if I'm doing a live, pen, uh, pink wax, key, all that stuff. Um, <clears throat> and they sit where I put them so they don't slide. So I do get a lot of questions about this when people see videos asking me what is that brown paper. It isn't paper, it's plastic um, placemats. The reason I use plastic is it doesn't produce any fluff or fuzz. If it had been material you would get a little fibres coming off it and maybe getting stuck in the glue. So it's plastic. So that's what that is. Um, but the main reason for this video is to show how I start and how I work with squares using a standard diamond painting pen. Um, this is a typical pink pen that you'll get in most kits and I'm going to use the standard generic pink wax. So nothing, no fancy pen, no fancy smelly wax, anything like that, just normal stuff that you'll get in a kit. So the first thing, obviously, is to lift the release paper and start. So I decided I'm going to do this a little bit longer than I would normally do it. So I'm going to lift that one and this one. I sort of reshuffled them. Um, that's the good thing about release paper. You can make the sections as big or as small as you like just by the way you place the, the sheets. <coughs> so I decided to do a longer one. How much I'll get done in this video I don't know, but I'm planning to do a follow-up so that people can see how it looks as the picture builds. So I'll do a follow-up maybe when I get about halfway or something. I don't know. I'll, I'll just see how it goes. When I get a bigger area, um, I'll uh, do another video. So, first things first, again, if you're totally new to diamond painting and you've got this pink pen, you've got this pink wax and you're not exactly sure what to do, the wax has a clear cover, so you have to peel that back first. Then you get your pen, put it in the corner, put your finger behind it, press it in, twist it, and you'll get a hole. So the pink wax is now in the tip of the pen. I don't know if I should maybe use the brighter light for this. Maybe, maybe not. Don't know if it makes a difference. But anyway, um, now we've got the pink wax. Now what I do is I just press it with my finger just to make sure it's in. And that's it. <coughs> so the first thing that I do is I look at the square in the bottom right hand corner. Now it really doesn't matter how you do this. As long as these squares are all filled in with the correct colour, 
it'll be fine but it's just the way that I work um, I always start in the bottom right hand corner so the bottom right hand corner symbol is an arrow downward pointing to the right so I look on my key which comes with the kit sometimes it'll be on the side of the canvas you won't get a sheet of paper with it um, sheet of papers, sheets of paper um, can be dangerous things because if this paper touches this glue it's going to stick and rip so um, holding paper over glue is not a good idea but I just wanted to let uh, people who are maybe thinking about diamond painting how it works so we're looking at this symbol this downward pointing arrow and if we look here we can see the downward pointing arrow is number 3 which is 310 which is black so the kit that I'm using is from Gems Flow a lot of people will know Gems Flow but because of their app not because of their kits but they provide bags that are already numbered in this case it's 3 and it's a black 3 on black drills so very very hard to see if I pick a lighter colour you'll see this one is number 32 there isn't, there you can see it there, got it in the light there is a number 3 so symbol look on the key find the symbol find the number number 3 so bag number 3 I decided to use this kit because the drills come in resealable bags I'm actually working on another kit with my wife at the moment so I'm doing this as a sort of side one and the only thing that isn't standard is I'm going to use a big diamond painting tray, uh, drill tray because the ones that you get normally with the kits are very small and I prefer to work with the big uh, trays and they have straight edges so that they don't tip over as easily so just pour some drills in here make sure I reseal the bag don't want that accidentally getting dropped so as you can see it's a bigger tray um, but it means that the drills can spread out you can put, put more drills in the tray and you can spread them out better so you see all I'm doing is shaking the tray from side to side I'm not doing it that hard the drills will flip over into the grooves I don't try and get them all perfect just as long as I get quite a few so I have to think about how I do this like I put the tray so the drills are straight up and down because when I pick the drill up I don't have to twist it or turn it it's orientated the right way and then I just place it in the square now when I do this the, the edges to me are the most important try and get the edges as straight as you possibly can so I put the edge in line with the, the edge of the picture here and in line with the edge at the bottom then what I'll do is pick up another one and I'll put it here now it just depends how the colours work it's just I can see all of this area here is black so I'm going to work that area first so I'm going to step up here and do what they call the checkerboard when I first started doing checkerboard what I would do is I would put the bottom drill in go up miss, a like miss one, next one, miss one, next one if you can do it, if the colours are right so I would do uh, drill space, drill space, drill space all the way up here I've sort of changed that, the way that I work now is I do a drill and then I go up to the left if I can if it's the right colour and then go back so I do a zigzag rather than just doing a straight line so what I'm concentrating on is the straight edge just making sure that that edge is right and then the one on the inside and then I just keep working up now my wife has done a gems flow diamond painting in the past and the drills were not the best uh, we'll see how this goes um, black or 310 drills if you're going to have problems with drills it tends to be the black ones <coughs> excuse me um, these ones don't look too bad I don't see any little burrs yet if you pick up a drill and you see there's a little bump on the side don't use it because that little bump will push drills away 
uh, once you place them next to it and it will start to knock things out of line and that's when things get difficult. Now that one has a little curve going in the way, I'll just use it. Um, but if you're being really fussy you should just use ones that are perfectly square. I can see these aren't perfect but I'm not going to let it bother me. I have done a lot of kits now from uh, various companies, I think I've something like 44 companies now and some have been excellent and some have been terrible but the pictures always ended up looking okay even in the bad ones and that's what I wanted to sort of show um, so I haven't chosen what I would consider one of the best uh, companies we'll see how it goes but again, as I said, I'm planning to do a sort of follow-up um, at some point, once I've done a bigger area. But really, this is just to let people see how I do it um, step by step. I know it takes a long time, but that's something else that you have to remember. These things take time. Um, the more time you spend trying to get the drills relatively straight, um, the easier it will be in the long run because what we're doing here is we're putting down a checkerboard pattern and then what we'll do is we'll come back and we'll fill in the gaps which is the easy part so if the drills are a little bit squint it doesn't matter because when you push the drills into the gaps that will turn the drills so they actually line up but I'm still trying to be pretty accurate, I always take my time, I don't see diamond painting as a race. Um, normally I am sitting here with headphones on and listening to music while I diamond paint. So um, for me it's a relaxation, it's, it's not a stress, it's actually to de-stress. So I'm just going to build up this checkerboard before I start filling it in. The other thing is I'm using a light pad um, which is um, an acrylic pad that sits underneath the canvas and is lit up so it makes it easier to see the symbols. Um, the downside of a light pad is it makes the gaps look even worse than uh, they are. So that's a thing that Wendy mentioned, she's using a light pad and it will make things look a lot worse. Now, how straight these drills look, I'm not sure, I'm just sort of placing them the way that I normally would. I'm trying to be accurate but not losing any sleep if they start to turn. And we'll see how this goes. I'm totally expecting there to be gaps. Um, it's a sort of misconception that people have got that if you do square drills you won't have any gaps at all and if you do you're doing something wrong that isn't true you will find gaps even with the best companies you will find gaps the thing is don't worry about them if you've been doing round drills have a look at them and look at the gaps you never hear people talking about the gaps in round drills and they are much bigger than the gaps that you'll get with squares because you're putting a circle against a circle and you're always going to get a little gap sort of diamond shaped gap in the corners you can't avoid it but it doesn't seem to bother people but when you, they do squares tiny little gaps uh, frustrate them but I think it's because the gaps are uneven. Um, the gaps with rounds are pretty consistent and even, so you, you don't really pick up on it. But when you're doing squares, you will start to see there's a bigger gap here than there. This one's a little bit out, like out of line, it's not quite straight. And you can get sort of caught up in that. Uh, the bottom line is the gaps don't matter doesn't matter how bad they are. I've had some kits where the drills have been too small for the squares. The gaps are really obvious when you're working with a light pad. 
but we can switch it off and step back. Um, the pictures always looked fine. When I place the drills, if I'm doing like just a single square, it doesn't matter if a single square, but it's just the edges, I try and get them lined up with the edge either way. After that, what I'm doing is I'm putting them, um, whoop, just drop that one, I'll just push it in place. But what I do is uh, I'm looking at the bottom left hand corner and that's what I'm aiming for and I line that up. If the drill is too small for the square, um, or in general the, the drills are too small, uh, you will sometimes get drills that are smaller than the rest. If you find that, don't use it. Sometimes you'll get ones that are bigger than the rest, don't use that either. So if it's a standard size, it looks about the same size as the rest. When I place them, I'm looking at this bottom left hand corner and that is my guide. I look at that corner, I, I ignore anything, any gap around anywhere else. So this part, I don't have much choice because I'm doing 310 and these symbols are scattered. So all I'm doing is I'm aiming the bottom line of the drill along the line of the edge of the diamond painting. But as soon as I get a chance, I go straight back into doing the checkerboard. So there, I put one up, put one down. Again, I'm aiming for the bottom line and I'm concentrating on this bottom left hand corner. As long as you your drills are inside the box, in those gaps, it won't matter. It'll look absolutely fine from a normal viewing distance with no light behind the diamond painting. The only time the diamond painting is lit up from behind is if you have a light pad and you're working on it. And you are very close to that picture, you will see every tiny half millimetre gap. If you're standing three or four feet away, and it's on the wall, you won't notice anything. You'll just see the picture, and that's the whole point. So you can see that drill had slightly turned, I just turned it slightly back. Doesn't matter, because once I start putting the other drills in, they'll push it into place. But if I do put a drill, uh, so try, we'll make that squint. Hopefully you can see that. So, <clears throat> sometimes when you put square drills down, you put it down, you think you put it straight, you'll go and pick up another drill, you'll come back and you'll see that the drill has twisted. So, what I've found is, if the drill has twisted, normally what I do is I turn it past where straight is, whatever direction it is. This one isn't spinning, so it doesn't really matter, but um, if I had twisted, say, a quarter, well, nearly a quarter turn to the right, I would turn it to straight and then turn it the same distance back and let it go. And I tend to see that that will go back to straight. If it's on, can on a, a glue that tends to make them spin, twist it past where straight is and let it go and see. And you'll just gradually get used to it how to place it um, and you'll get them lined up. The other thing is once you start putting the other drills in around it, that should square up as well. But it's just up to you when you decide you're going to try and fix it. Cut my hand on the glue, pop the canvas up. Need to fix it. You always want the canvas to be flat. Don't have uh, sort of waves in it. So I'll just flatten that again, rather than trying to work on that lump. Now this drill, again, I don't know how well the camera is going to focus, but there is a tiny little bar on the left hand side. It's about maybe what half a millimetre or something. I don't use that. That goes in the trash tray. So I have a tray that I use and I put all my junk in that one. Um, just don't use it because that little half millimetre will push the drill next to it over half a millimetre and if you keep using them your drills will start to be getting pushed in all directions and then it just becomes really hard to get them lined up. The main thing is that the edges of the drills are clean. It doesn't matter if they curve in a little bit, 
it will create a bigger gap but you won't see it when you're finished you won't see it um, so right I think I'll I'll fill in these little ones as I said I have no idea how long this video is going to be I'm just sort of talking as I go um, again this is intended for people who have never done squares before they're maybe a bit worried about squares um, I just sort of think about things as I go um, I haven't <laughs> I haven't scripted I never script anything but I haven't scripted this I'm just talking as I think about things um, but you get the idea hopefully of what I'm doing I'm, I'm concentrating that bottom left hand corner and we won't notice the gaps until I start filling in so I just want to get a little bit of this black done um, normally what I would do is I would do all of the black so I would leave this checkerboard and I would work along until I had the whole thing either filled like these ones you can see that one spun it's went to the right a bit I would turn it to the left a bit and then just forget it it'll probably straighten up it doesn't really matter this one it's got a little bit in the top oop, the top corner this is where tweezers come in handy when you drop your drills um, there's a little curve on that, a little bump on the corner so I won't use it I'm very fussy when it comes to the drills sometimes uh, you'll get them that the, the quality isn't that good and you're going to have to use ones that aren't quite square but still it shouldn't really make any difference in the overall picture. You might notice when you're looking at it up close that things are a bit sort of off but the main thing is if you get the edges straight um, it, it keeps everything looking straight. If your edges are wavering out in and out that's the most obvious thing that somebody would notice. But you have to remember that people that are looking at a diamond painting picture they're looking at the picture they're not looking at individual drills they're not looking and saying oh that, that drill there's squint unless it's not a diamond painter in general people are looking at the picture and our eyes are not that great um, we do not notice a half millimeter gap from four feet away if you were a bird of prey you would see it but we don't and your eye just sort of blend it in. Um, you look at a picture and you automatically, you, your eye um, assumes it's whatever it's meant to be, like it's a vase, it's a flower, it's a bird, it's like, we don't really pick up in all the tiny little bits and pieces. Um, right, I think I'll, I'll stop at that. I'm going to do these little ones. <clears throat> I tend to leave the checkerboard until I've got all the checkerboard that I can do done and then I just go back and fill everything in but just for the sake of time I'm not going to go through all this and checkerboard it it's going to make the video too long but I'll sort of explain the way that I work at least to get it started so now I'm just going to go and start filling in the checkerboard and if I see the drill pushes off over the edge I'll push it back it's better to do it when you only have a few drills if you do this section and think oh I'm going to straighten these you're trying to push against hundreds or thousands of drills it's very very difficult um, so if you notice that your line is going off here if you have to push the drill next to it over a little bit but you should be able to push it that's the good thing about the the diamond painting pens you can push and move things if it's on poured glue if it's on double sided adhesive depending on how far you have to try and move it it's sometimes better to pick the drill off and replace it because double sided adhesive isn't really slidey um, the good thing about the poured glue is you can slide drills about quite easily so it's easier to get them exactly in place 
So I've already started doing the zigzag again, but I'm keeping an eye on that edge. That's the for me that is the main thing. Not so missed one there. Drills actually don't seem that bad to me. Um, you should be able to see those tiny little gaps. But as far as the edges go, I would tweak them as soon as I realise they may be off a bit. Because there isn't much you can do once you've filled the whole thing in and then you suddenly think, yeah, I'm going to straighten this because it means you have to straighten everything all the way across and even using the, the straighteners that you sometimes see that have got the handle on them, the big long straighteners trying to push all these, it won't work um, it's not really going to work I mean I've always done this by hand just look at it and take my time and try and get them straight um, but I think I've sort of lost track. I think this is my some like fifty third diamond painting, and most of what I've done has been square. Now the other thing is, if you do the zigzag thing, I mean initially what I was thinking was I was going to do the zigzag and then fill in the little gaps, but I decided just to do the whole checkerboard. But this drill that I'm putting in, you can see that the gap is already there, so I'm just putting it in against this one, and it's lined up. So all you're doing is basically putting it in the gap and it seems to be working. As I said, if you notice that your line is a bit out, like that one's maybe slightly, but I mean, we're getting really, really nitpicky with this. Nobody's going to notice that. So then come up, start filling the gaps in. Some of these drills look a bit iffy to me. But I'm not going to be too fussy, they don't have burrs uh, sticking out, just that one so far. And I'm just sort of tweaking them as I go. I do it without thinking. But you find that when you push the drills into these square gaps, it's pushing any drills that might be in that square. The drill that you put in sort of pushes them out and it turns them. So. You don't have to do this thing that I was talking about turning, but I know it's just, I mean, I do it all the time. If I'm working on a diamond painting, I just happen to see a drill squint. I'll try and straighten it. It's just what I do. I know I don't have to, but I just do. <clears throat> so I think I'll just finish this little bit of checkerboard and then... Uh, Call it a day, I think, maybe. Not sure. Not sure how long I've been. Yeah, nearly 30 minutes. And all I've done is this. But as I said, I've never ever seen diamond painting as a race. I like to take the time. I like to try and get them as straight as possible. It makes life easier. At the end of the day, nobody's going to notice all these little gaps. And, and people have got different ways to work. Um, some people would maybe look at a section and say, right, okay, it's got mainly, in this case it may actually be black, but it's got mainly a certain colour. I'll do that first, so I'll get a lot of it sort of done. Um, some people might decide to do all the little bits and pieces, like all this just one here, one there type thing. I would tend to do it the other way and do these random single two or three ones last because by that time you've filled everything else in and your uh, your square grid is pretty much set. So putting these just uh, one or two in, um, it's easier I think anyway to do it that way than put them down first and Chances are they're going to spin and move a little bit. But again, once you put the drills in around them, it should fix that. But I know it, it's just something that people pick up on that isn't straight. I mean, like I said, I do it all the time. Um, just sit and tweak things as I pass them. Don't think about it. 
But I know I don't really have to do it. So, we're getting there. In fact, thinking about it, um, uh, yeah, I'll let you see the picture. This is what I'm working on. Now, the thing I noticed straight away is the background in this picture, and if you see the original picture, is green. And I have only this, and it, is, it looks nearly black. I have two bags of 310. Now, if you look at this, there's very little actual black. The centre of the eyes, maybe a, a little bit on the coffee cup. And that's it. But with this kit, I got this much black. So, this is something as well. When you see kits, depending on how good the company is at rendering, um, you may not actually get what you think. This picture is going to be very dark. But I bought it because I was just curious because I use the Gems Flow app all the time to keep track of uh, the diamond paintings when I buy them, when I order them, when I receive them, when I start them, when I finish them, and if they're uh, square, round or special drills, um, which box they're in because when I do all these unboxings and unbaggings I open up the kits and I put the drills in freezer bags and I put them in containers that I've got numbered so I keep a track so if I'm looking for drills for a specific kit I look it up on Gems Flow and it will say box number 3 so I know where to look rather than going through uh, I think I've got 10 or 11 boxes now with bags of bags and bags of drills <coughs> okay so I'll do this a little bit so you know what it's like once you start I was just saying that, is it the Pringles advert once you pop you can't stop so I'm just going to do this last little section but as I said um, I'm going to do a follow up once I've done quite a bit more so people can get an idea of how it looks with the light pad and without the light pad I'll probably post some pictures up on Instagram just uh, once in a while so if you want to see the progress you can catch me on Instagram at Diamond Painting Gym or if you subscribe to this channel and hit the notification button um, you'll get a little message when I do the follow-up video uh, I think that is it. I'm not going to do any more than that. <coughs> so that's it. I've done the three tens of the black. The next colour would be, for me, anyway, the way that I work would be the P. So if I look on the key, P is number 17. So bag number 17 is that a very dark blue so as I said this picture is going to be a lot darker than it looks like it's going to be in the original artwork um, which will make the owl's eyes pop quite a bit because the background is going to be very dark but we'll see how it ends up so I'm not going to do the 17s just now so the thing is this is with the light pad on and I'll switch the light pad off I'll switch it back on so the, the area that we're looking at is here where we've got a lot of drills for me looking at it from here about what a foot away I can barely see a gap there 
and it's only because the light is reflecting back off the glue. I can see a little shiny bit and there. And that's me really, really looking. Just a general glance, there's no gaps. Turn the uh, light pad back on. <coughs> I can see gaps here, 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 everywhere. If I sort of sit at an angle to the side, there's no gaps. It's, again, it depends where you're looking from. But the main thing for me is this edge. That one to me looks slightly out, very slightly. So that moved those drills. But then you have to be careful because you don't want this drill to move into this P box because then it's going to be very hard to get the, the drill in and it could cause it to pop. So for the sake of a fraction of a millimeter, it's not worth it. it has to be a little bit of uh, give and take with the drills. The gaps actually help to stop the uh, surrounding drills popping up. If you get drills popping all the time, it's because they're too tight. So the idea that square drills, you have no gaps at all, just doesn't work. It causes more problems than it's worth. So if you see these random gaps, switch your light off and take a step back. I mean, I'm not even taking a step back, but I can't see the gaps. Um, so that's it. Uh, as I said, it was the idea came because Wendy was getting really worried about it. She sent me pictures and Hopefully this helps Wendy, um, it's sort of showing the way that I work about the straight edge. The other thing you can do is if you have an old credit card, if you're having problems trying to get the straight edge, you can use an old credit card, look I've got one just lying here, just thought. so you could set that on the edge and then it will actually stick to the glue which actually helps to keep it in place, so you make sure you get it lined up on the, the very edge. And then you can just set your finger on it and you can put the drills in and put them against the credit card and then that way you've got them as straight as you can get them. I don't go to that extent. I never have, but it's just an idea. If you really if you've having problems getting that straight line. Um to me the main thing is you take take your time. That's the main thing. Take your time nice and slow. Get your drills and edge straight because that is the only place that anybody's going to notice if it starts to waver. And if these drills are going out the way or in the way, it's going to affect the drills next to it. They're either going to be into the next square that way or into the next square that way and it starts to make things all a bit weary. Um, again, when the picture's finished, it can be a bit wavy and nobody's going to notice. But I like to try and get the edges as straight as possible, and that's how I do it, just purely by eye. And um, I'm just using the standard pen. I didn't want to use, the only thing that I used different was the tray, because um, you can see how many drills I can get in that. If you use the standard tray, plus the standard tray, I mention all the time, but the standard tray has got these edges, and if you put it down and put your hand on it, it will flip over. This one, if we can do it without pulling drills in everywhere, it's got straight edges. So when it sits, it's pretty sturdy, it's wider. I can actually sit my hand, if, sit over the glue, but if, I was, if that was covered up and I was working, I can actually sit my hand on that tray and it won't flip over. Um, definitely cannot do it with that tray. So a, a big tray with flat sides is definitely um, a nice thing to have. Um, the pens, people get custom pens, I mean I do as well, um, normally this is the pen that I would use, but I, I, I wanted to show using the standard pink pen that you get in the kits, so people don't think, oh have to get that, like a pen like that, you don't, you don't, the technique is exactly the same, pink wax goes in the end, the pink wax picks up the drill, um, it's just, I find this more comfortable, over a few hours at a time um, compared to the thin straw 
but you don't have to get a fancy pen. It won't make things any straighter or any different. The technique is exactly the same. The pen shape is maybe more for comfort or just because it looks nicer, simple as that. You're going to be using the thing for hours if you get into diamond painting, so why not get a nice one? Again, it's up to you. You could say, well, I'd rather buy a diamond painting. Makes sense. So again, it's a personal choice. So that's it. Uh, how I start uh, a square drill diamond painting. So that's it. How I start a square drill diamond painting with a standard diamond painting pen. Um, as I said, it was really because Wendy had been getting uh, really worried about the custom that she'd bought and she was having problems with the drills. Um, I always feel it's a lot easier for people to see things uh, rather than trying to explain how you work the drills. And I thought, I'll do a little video. And then I thought, well, hang on a minute, there could be other people who are maybe thinking about doing the square drills and a bit worried about it because they hear everybody saying, oh, they're really hard and they cause a lot of problems. Um, I thought to see somebody actually doing it, how they do it, using a standard pink pen, nothing fancy, um, and just taking their time. That's the main thing. Um, it is really important that you check the drills. You, you don't want little bits sticking out at the edges because that is going to start knocking things out and that just multiplies itself as it goes on. So always be selective. Make sure that the drills have nice straight edges, nice clean edges. If they concave in the way a little bit, you can still use them. It just means you'll get a gap, but you won't see it um, from any distance. If you do round drills at the moment, have a look at them and look at the size of those gaps. They're huge compared to the gaps that you're going to get with squares. Um, the only difference is the gaps in rounds are even and the ones with squares are not. You will get gaps with every company. I can definitely say that. Um, I've tried 44 different companies, some very, very well-known companies, some very, well, unknown companies. Um, there's always gaps. Some are definitely worse than others, but it's more to do with the shape of the drill um, or the consistencies of the drills. Uh, the size, uh, Some I've had some where they can vary quite a bit. If I notice a drill looks smaller, I won't use it. If it's, if it's very noticeable, if it looks bigger or higher, sometimes you get them in the, like, for some reason, taller than the normal ones, I don't use them. Anything that looks a bit iffy, don't use it. You always get extras. Um, they allow for some getting thrown away. Um, you shouldn't normally run out. I know it does happen, but in general, you always have extra drills. So don't feel that you, because you've got that drill, you have to use it. It's not a matter of they give you exactly the number you need and you can't afford to lose any. Um, there should always be some spares. So um, try and make sure that you're not using ones that have got defects, especially little tabs that stick out. They are the worst because they knock everything out. Um, and the main thing probably is to take your time and enjoy yourself. It's, it's a hobby. It's not a race. It's not a competition. Um, you shouldn't be getting stressed. That's the thing. I mean, the whole point of diamond painting is to relax. Okay, you might get stressed the day that you drop a bag of uh, 3,000 drills and you forgot to seal it and it hits the floor and scatters everywhere. Or you knock a tray over and it's, you've just filled it with drills. That's not pleasant, but um, you learn from these things. So that's it. Um, I hope it sort of made things uh, a little bit more clear, uh, Wendy. And for the people who are maybe a bit apprehensive about doing squares, I hope it's maybe uh, given you that inspiration to just say, I'm going to try this. Um, and that's it. The big thing is, don't mind the gap. So that's it for today. If you enjoyed the video and you want to see uh, some unboxings, unbaggings, comparisons, little things like this, um, please subscribe and hit the notification button. 
If you do that, you'll get a little message when I post my next video, which hopefully will be quite soon. I'm still recovering, you can probably hear it in my voice, uh, still recovering from this uh, flu that's going around in Copenhagen. Um, my wife has it at the moment, so um, it's nice to share, as they say. So that's it for today. Thanks for watching, and in the meantime, take care, be safe, and wash your hands.